everyone. This is Luke, episode uh, 03. And for the uninitiated, this is a cool set of podcasts brought to you by OnePlus's editorial uh, team from the OnePlus writers. And uh, this is a series of podcasts that we do where we discuss a lot of interesting topics around the world, generally related to tech, um, something to keep uh, things going. And in today's episode, we have myself, Cosmic Paladin, Akka Ganesh, uh, we have David, uh, popularly known as DS Monterio, Suhant, again known as uh, Suhant M on the forums, and Texas Aggie one, Aka Randy. And in today's uh, podcast, we're going to be discussing about the CES 21. So formerly known as the Consumer Electronics Show, this is an annual event that happens in Vegas, where a lot of uh, technology companies come and uh, display their prototypes, something about the bleeding uh, edge of the technology, what's upcoming and so on, right? So we're going to be talking about uh, what each one of us uh, really liked, what they displayed out there. So let's get started. Um, David, over to you. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. So... CES was a bit weird for me this year. Um, it was definitely harder to keep track of things without the, the fair actually happening. So you, you saw YouTubers here and there receiving um, cool products to test. You saw some uh, press releases, but, but nothing as big as, as the previous years. Um, but one one thing really caught my uh, caught my eye, which was the LG um, announcement. So they they seem to go full on uh, with with COVID. So they had these um, robots to uh, clean hotels and and other public places. They had one thing that looked like a um, Bluetooth speaker, but was actually um, a, an air a purifier uh, that you could take everywhere to your car. So I'm not really sure what, what that was about. Uh, they also shared um, their new refrigerator with a UV light to clean the, the, the water. So I think um, COVID really affected them and, and that really led to, to the kind of products they showed um, on, on CES. Um, another thing that really made me think um, was how these fairs will happen in the future uh, because as you see work from home uh, changing our lives in terms of work i think this ex online experience with all these fairs happening online uh, will also take a toll on how these events happen um, so i'm really curious to see how things will progress once the uh, the virus situation improves um, so definitely interested to see how ces 2022 will be uh, and moving forward with all the first. Thanks, David. Yeah, you make an interesting point um, in, in all these uh, shows, especially when it's got to do with the technology. Uh, the show must go on, but then what particularly the COVID uh, pandemic has taken away is people actually going there and uh, getting a feel of, of the latest technology on their hands, and we miss those reactions that we typically see. Uh, what caught my attention um, was uh, TCL. Uh, they came up with something called as a next paper uh, e-readers uh, with some 20 plus patterns uh, involved in it. Um, particularly why? Because usually when it comes to displays and uh, um, you know these things, Samsung and LG are the ones that we hear about, but then this time it was uh, TCL. This one particularly brings best of multiple worlds. One thing is it's an e-reader, but it, it has colors in it. It has no backlight and zero blue light and leverages on the light coming in from the environment. And this excites uh, people like me who are into comics and uh, consume a whole lot of reading content on the tablets. Um, while we do uh, consume that on e-readers such as Kindle and Kobo, um, there is a miss in terms of the immersiveness, especially when it's got to do with the graphics. Um, but then when we take it to the iPads and the Samsungs, um, it leads to eyesores, right? So that's where Next Paper comes in uh, with their unique technology, uh, bringing in the best of multiple uh, worlds. And um, it's, it's a display. They claim that it's really easy on eyes and has absolutely no flickers. And all of this, uh, it brings in with uh, um, technology that has a very highly efficient uh, battery. Uh, apart from all of this, uh, it's just it's just like any typical uh, tablet uh, coming with an 8.88 inch uh, screen and 5500 mh battery and uh, eight megapixel cameras on the front and the rear 
and it's also got a 3.5 mm jack in this age, right? And also Wi-Fi and 4G technology. And it, it's just at uh, 316 grams and costing around 349 euros. Um, so hopefully this is going to set a trend in the tablets and revive um, the the dull and lackluster uh, you know, world of tablets that we've seen pretty, pretty much dominant, uh, dominated by the iPads of the world. So let's see how this blades up. And uh, TCL also claims that they're going to do more of uh, this technology in their rollable devices and uh, get it connected to several uh, devices out there on the IoT front. Yeah, so let's see. So Swant, over to you. So just to give everyone some context, I was in the market for a new laptop late last year. I'm using... Um, a MacBook Pro temporarily right now. So I'm still in the market and I've been keeping an eye on the ROG Zephyrus G14. Um, and like Asus did an amazing job and refreshed the entire, uh, entire gaming lineup uh, under their Republic of Gamers or ROG um, during CES. They, they had a lot of different models come out, all very spectacular in their own, their own, their own price range. Um, and yeah, so just to just to give you some perspective, I'll just touch upon some of the models. So the first one was called the Flow X13. This is by far one of the most incredible laptops that I've seen come out this year so far. It hasn't been that long, but it still probably will be the most spectacular one uh, among the most spectacular. So it's a very, very um, thin and light laptop that you can take anywhere with you. I would compare it to somewhere between a MacBook Pro and an Air, uh, but more in the Windows world. It uh, doesn't have the best graphics card, but the kicker is it, you can get an external GPU with the, uh, a Ryzen 30 series card in an ultra portable form factor that just plugs in um, without uh, needing power. Power is attachable, but yeah. And of course comes in a 120 Hertz display, uh, which is pretty standard in the industry right now. And the other laptops was the Strix. This is the beefy gaming laptop for all the PC master race gamers. And uh, it has a 64 gigs of, of RAM and just ridiculous specs. Uh, I'm not gonna touch too much on that. It's just very beefy is what I uh, call it. Um, getting to the one that I love the most, the G14. It won a lot of awards last year for being the best all-around gaming laptop, but it's much more than a gaming laptop. It's it's like a gaming laptop that doesn't look like a gaming laptop um, that anyone can use, whether you're a creative, a business professional, whatever you're in. I think it's the best laptop in its class. And this year it got refreshed with a high refresh rate, um, either 120 or 140, 40 her, uh, 144 hertz, depending on which model you go for. And yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. All of the all every single laptop that uh, ROG came out with has a hundred watt USB uh, USB C charging as well. So it's incredible that you get both proprietary charging um, and a hundred watts in USB C charging. You can basically use that sixty five watt um, charger you have probably with your eight eight Pro or uh, 8T to charge your laptop at a very good speed. So USB-C, all the things. Uh, another one that came out from ROG was the Zephyrus Duo. This is the insane looking dual screen laptop where you have like one of the screens that's half the size of the keyboard up tilted to about a 35, 40 degree angle. Um, that's matte. Uh, matte displays are very uh, uncommon nowadays. So it's nice to see something that's already very unique um, and already like something that people would want. Um, also comes with a 300, like uh, I think up to a 300 Hertz uh, display, like the main display. So the Zephyrus Duo is also one of the, the beefier uh, gaming laptops that ROG has come out with. And it's, yeah, along with its, uh, the, the rest of the lineup, it's incredible. So yeah, sponsor me ROG, please. Yeah, <laughs> uh, back to you Ganesh. Brilliant, Swant. Uh, 100, 100 watts, you say, huh? ROG has a rogue charger right there. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I love Asus's uh, rogue phones, especially. They're so underrated. Um, yeah, they, they do a lot of interesting stuff. Let's see what Randy has to say. Over to you, Randy. 
Hey everybody, um, I, I was really interested also in the ROG laptop, so thanks for covering that. My, my next big thing I was really actually more interested in was a product I'd never heard of before called Garden. And so Garden is a form of hydroponics where you grow plants basically with water and nutrients and you don't need to use soil. And it comes with a little app and so you set the system up in your house and it only takes up like two feet by two feet it's very like low footprint it's about five feet tall comes with an app and it has uh, lighting on it for the plants and it also has cameras so so like actual people at garden can like look in the and the cameras only point towards the plants so there's not like a privacy issue there but they can look at the plants and see how they're doing and give you a recommendation and so the app tells you like the app controls like watering and giving it food or whatever and and then it also tells you like hey move the plant that's down at the bottom up to the top of the middle row because it needs to get a little less light or a little more light or whatever it's pretty awesome because being in the middle of a pandemic sometimes you might be faced with shortages of particular foods or particular vegetables that you like and so you can actually just grow them at your house now and so it solves that problem it also um the thing that it kind of i didn't like about it was it has plastic pods that are that are pretty hefty i mean i'm not saying like a pound but maybe they're like a few you know six ounces or something like that and you can reuse them but you can only use the ai and them um, working with you if you're on the subscription plan so there's nothing right now to do with the pods like there's no way to send them back that would be the one thing i'd love to see them do like you could send the pods back so subscription and the price of the the whole thing is about $77 a month over the course of two years. So you're paying for the unit and actually paying for new seeds every month, which really isn't bad considering that it can replace that in groceries. So I'm really excited to look at it. I'm planning on trying it out myself and seeing how it goes. Back to you. <laughs> cool stuff out there, Randy. So uh, folks, that is Garden with a Y. And if you ask why, because it makes sense. And what more uh, artificial side of things uh, you know, being leveraged to get the natural things moving. All right. So uh, those are some of the cool stuff that we had to talk to you about. And uh, as we move into the closing, um, so David, you touched upon the topic of how the pandemic has changed the way uh, the, the things in the tech uh, have been, uh, you know, have been going about. So you want to just talk a little more on that as we close it? Yeah, uh, that's definitely a, a great question. Um, so it's it's not limited to, to the CES. Um, both um, other fairs and um, manufacturers are changing the way they, they present the products to us. Um, they are changing the way they interact with, with um, the customer. Um, and you see even changes in the way uh, companies talk with their customers. Um, going a bit more uh, into OnePlus, um, we have planned a lot of offline events uh, for 2020, um, none of which actually happened, as, as you can imagine. Uh, we thought about doing things like um, photo walks, uh, like we did in the past. Um, continue with, with the OEFs in, in person. And we had to, to reinvent ourselves for 2020. And I think that that change will continue in 2021, unfortunately, uh, due to how things are uh, still are. Um, but even in terms of, of communication, you, you see a lot of differences. Um, it, people are more um, interested in personal interactions because it's what we can't have right now. Um, so you see companies touching those points um, when talking with the customer. Um, as for these big fairs, I'm really not sure if they will continue to be as big in the future, just because um, if online works, it's cheaper, it's mostly uh, more efficient in terms of communication. Um, so I think we'll see more um, more product uh, launches being online. We'll see more um, 
press releases and less uh, fairs like like CES and and others like it. Yeah, thanks, David. Uh, good points there. But yeah, uh, many of us surely miss uh, certain events like the OnePlus pop-ups, right? Where you where you get a chance to meet the OnePlus community and your close friends and say, what's up? Like, I would say, what's up, Suhant? Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing, you say? I've yeah. heard someone say that recently. Someone has been tweeting about it, right? Yeah, um, it's, this, it's this guy called uh, Carl Payne. Not sure if you've heard of him. He, he was one oh, yes. co-founder. And uh, yeah, so um, I chuckled a bit when I heard that the, the company he was starting was called Nothing. Um, it kind of reminded me when Elon Musk uh, announced Boring Company. And everyone kind of lost their lost their brains for a second. Yeah, so we know nothing about nothing. Um, just a few things from an article that came on The Verge. Um, I'll just read it out for now. Uh, so their mission statement was to remove barriers between people and technology to create a seamless digital future. And uh, Carl Pei also added saying that we believe the best technology is beautiful, yet natural and intuitive to use. When sufficiently advanced, it should fade into the background and feel like nothing. So do with that what you will. There's a lot of speculation before the, the first products get announced. Um, if we have time, we can go around and discuss them here. And just to add, um, before we do get into speculation, the investor list for nothing is not nothing. It's pretty incredible. So the co-founder of Reddit, um, the co-founder of Twitch, the co-founder, uh, the CEO of Product Hunt, and Casey Neistat, one of the biggest creators on YouTube. Um, it's absolutely insane. There's a reason people might be believing in this company, um, especially if they are. So I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, nothing. All right. Yeah. From the man um, who always said never settle, looks like he's finally settled with it for nothing. And, and that's what I teased him. So interesting stuff there. Let's see what Carl is uh, uh, up his sleeve. Uh, we're all eagerly waiting as tech enthusiasts. And yes, we love and uh, you know enthusiasts companies. And you know those are the ones who disrupt the world. All right. Um, so that's what we had for you today. Um, this is uh, Loop 03 coming to an end from the OnePlus Writers Club. We're not only known to write well, we talk well as well. And um, so hope you all love this podcast and tell us what you love and uh, any feedback is welcome. For now, um, this is Cosmic Paladin, David, Suhant and Randy signing off. Stay safe and uh, let the enthusiasm over the tech side of things be alive. Thank you. Take care. Never stop. Never settle.